If you were to talk to somebody who was considering this program but was on the fence, maybe a little skeptical because it does sound too good to be true, what would you say to them about taking that first step and, and signing up and enrolling? Yeah, it's skeptic. How can your 5 or 7% HELOC be cheaper than my 2% locked-in rate from when interest rates were low? I think that's where people get confused. It's all about leveraging the system. I think the biggest thing most people will probably run into potentially doing this, which would be the same thing that I ran into to begin with, can work for everybody, but it's dependent on you. I'm I'm Glenn. I'm one of the customer support team here at Replace Your Mortgage. I'm here with Travis Barker. And Travis, I I guess I've gone and said your name, but tell us, Travis, a little bit about you and, and what you do to get started. Yeah. So my name is Travis Parker. I own a business, owned it for about 10 years at this point. So 20 married, I have five kids. I would say moderately financially successful, easily middle-class, if you could even call us that in the last several years, we've had more success for sure. How did you first hear about Replace Your Mortgage? So I was at a mastermind event where people were talking about building wealth. Part of that discussion was someone mentioned leveraging a HELOC and the possibilities of that. Okay. I'd done some research on a HELOC and what it was. I talked to a few banks and I, at the time I really didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know exactly how to leverage it. So I started doing research about banks that would do HELOCs. And that's when I came across a replace your mortgage. And at the time, really all I was wanting was the bank list. That way I could get a bank that would give me what I wanted. Because I pretty much already made up my mind that I was going to do it. I'd done enough research on my own. So my whole intention in buying into the program was to get the list so I could find a lender that would give me exactly what I wanted. But really just looking on Google is how I found it. But what happened afterwards is all of the ancillary training that comes with it, that in the group in in and of itself accelerated the path that we started going down. What did that mean to you as far as being able to pull off the strategy? Yeah. So a couple of things. Come to find out, I didn't actually need the bank list. I just needed to ask the right questions, okay. which is part of what Michael goes through in the training. So that's one. So that was very helpful because most lenders that I've talked to either A, have no idea what you're talking about or aren't willing to give you that particular product. Okay. okay. So that was one. The second thing is so leveraging a 0% interest credit card. So my wife and I did this. We got approved for, I think it was like some twenty a $20,000 credit card, give or take. Okay. That we let the balance right on that yeah. for 24 months or 18 months. And so really just for lack of a better word, double dipping and not paying interest. Okay. So we can leverage all of that. The other thing that I think Michael teaches really well is just basically keeping your bank account at zero. Most people wouldn't think about that. They would maybe transfer money once or twice or just there's a lot of little tidbits that when compounded make the effect so much greater. So to to put this in perspective, like when I first hopped on the sales call going through the numbers, which where we were at financially, we had the mortgage on our house, I think for two years at the time because we'd recently just bought it. And so we didn't have a whole lot of equity in it either. And the gentleman that I talked to was basically saying, based on where you're at right now, you can pay your house off in seven or eight years. At the time, we'd only had three of our kids. We, didn't, we did not have a lot of cash flow or equity, but it would still work. So that's good. And then other things that, that they talk about is how to start leveraging your equity and investments. So we were doing this and paying down our house quicker than we thought. We, I wouldn't call it budgeting, but we just set some constraints on spending just to, to maximize. And we actually almost had our house paid off in a couple of years. I think it was about wow, okay. 18 months. We had an opportunity to come up to buy some apartments, which two set, two apartment buildings, which we wound up doing. And we used the HELOC to do that. But I mean, we leveraged the HELOC in a multitude of ways, just having that free flow capital. We used it to, to purchase a couple of apartments. We did some other things. Despite all of those expenses, we still actually paid our house off almost three years to the day from when we joined the program. Okay, so you were able to pay your house off. Did did that pay the HELOC down to zero, including the apartments? Yeah, everything else that we've done. Wow, so that's a lot better than seven years that you initially were told. Yeah, and and I do own my own business. And so not everyone doing this, I'm sure, will. The whole point is, is to grow wealth. So we used the HELOC to leverage some investment like in the business or actually COVID hit, we had the HELOC and COVID hit and that was a tough time for the business as well. So we actually pulled equity out of that 
and put it into the business. So just that flexibility allowed us to survive some of those interesting times that I don't think either we would have, because at the time we would have put extra savings into the paying down the house or just, it's weird how when you consolidate everything, the, I don't know how fluid everything can become. Not only did you increase your real estate portfolio by two apartment buildings, COVID came and limited your income. I think I'm hearing a little bit. Income expenses. Yeah. So basically what had happened, actually the week that COVID hit, my business had just opened an office in Denver. Okay. I'm in Nebraska for perspective, okay. so it's five hours away. And we did that right when COVID hit. So we put all this money into it. But basically we kept spending money because no one had any idea how long COVID was going to sure. last. Right. And we weren't getting any return on it because people weren't. Okay. We're an IT, but we used to have to meet clients, meet customers. People were still sketchy about remote. Remote work wasn't a super big thing until COVID. COVID helped us out a lot in that aspect, but it was still difficult for us to close clients. So we kept that office there for two years, which just sucked. We didn't get the anticipated revenue that we were hoping for. Okay. The yeah. expansion. So we had to find the money elsewhere to keep that going. What was the impact and why did you choose to build your portfolio when you did? How did that appeal to you and, and what was the reasoning behind it? Circumstance, honestly. Okay. So my wife has been wanting to move and move from her current home for a while. Actually, she just likes looking at houses, if I'm being honest. There was a house available where my, my in-laws live, her parents, and we went and looked at the house and it was too much money for what they had. And while we were there, my father-in-law said, hey, there's these apartments built. These apartment buildings are for sale. If you want to go look at them, because we've been talking about investing in real estate, getting rentals or doing something. We didn't know what it was we wanted to do, but we just looking for ways, obviously, to build wealth, grow passive income and things like that. So we went and looked at these apartment buildings. We're like, OK, we like them. we think it can work. We we put in an offer, honestly, thinking that we wouldn't get anywhere with it. So they accepted the offer. And the next step was we thought, OK, we're going to get denied for who knows what reason. Like we didn't mm -hmm. think we'd be able to come up with the down payment or just who, whichever. And just every step where we thought that it would fail just kept coming together. And right. we wound up closing in less than 30 days. And when you added the apartment buildings, you turned that into a more of a positive cash flow with the incoming rent, accelerate the pay down of the, the overall amount that you owed. Is that? Yeah. It, 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 yeah. We're absolutely cash flow positive. And we've owned them now for almost 18 months. And in fact, just reviewing taxes and things like that with my wife, we have, we've seen our, what do you want to call it? Our total income or whatever on taxes, it's grown on almost two and a half times over the last three years. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Is there anything that you can think of that would have made the replace your mortgage process easier for you or better from your perspective? Not, no, I don't think so. It was a very clean process. I can tell you that my wife almost probably almost divorced me over things. I told her, I said, hey, I found this program online and I don't know what your cost is now. For me, it was, I think $4,000, maybe okay. more. But I'm like, hey, I want to spend $4,000. And again, we just had two kids. We didn't have money in savings. We had bills. Right. Right. I'm like, I want to spend $4,000 to do this. And she's like, she was like, you want to do what? They're scamming you. It's all, yeah. all kinds of things. So I did it anyway. Were, were we scamming you? Maybe that would be a good sound bite. No, it, it's, it's all... It's very legitimate. Okay. Uh, and I think the tagline that Michael uses that it's math, not magic. Right. It's perfect. But the training is invaluable because you can use it in multiple avenues. Yes. But it just, it's one of those things that looks too good to be true. But if you apply the training and the methodologies, it definitely works. Right. So to this day, my wife will sing praises about it. And she says, I don't understand it. I just know that it works. Okay. What, were there any difficult parts of the process? For you, I think the biggest thing most people will probably run into potentially doing this, which would be the same thing that I ran into to begin with, is before I got into the group of the program, I called some people asking about HELOCs and everyone wanted a second position HELOC. And obviously I had no equity in my home. So mm -hmm. everyone was like, no. And then the thing is just not knowing the, the correct way to ask for it or to approach it. And then even then when people are trying to sell you a different product, being firm in your stance. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Which so that so it takes some intestinal fortitude. Right. I feel like anyone that wants to build wealth needs that anyway. So if you're not if, if that's fair. not yeah, very fair. So one last question, Travis. If you were to talk to somebody who was considering this program but was on the fence, maybe a little skeptical because it does sound too good to be true, what would you say to them about taking that first step and, and signing up and enrolling? 
I guess the first question is I would ask what their goals are, because I, I think people, if people are on the fence, they probably don't know what they want out of it. Okay. Right? And you get so much more. So like I mentioned, you, you get the list, you get all the training, but you get the, the group, which is like a mini mastermind in and of itself, which is powerful. And, but for someone to, to not have the buyer's remorse, they got I would ask them, Hey, are you dedicated? Are you sure you know what you want to do? And can you follow a process? Right. Because yeah. it does take discipline. It doesn't take a lot of discipline, but it takes some discipline right. because suddenly getting access to a crap ton of equity, people impulse buy. And sure. you can, you, the program, it's a tool. Tools can be good yeah. and bad. And if you use it incorrectly, you can hurt yourself. So my first question is to make sure that someone is in the right frame of mind, because you also don't want to sell them something that is going to be bad for them. So I would ask their positioning and understand them and their personality and their goals to make sure that it's a good fit and that they have the discipline and the fortitude for it. And then if you determine that they do. Yeah. Then at that point, it's a no brainer. And I really think that the program does sell itself. I think the one thing that wasn't very clearly displayed or impressed upon was the group and that it's in lifetime membership for lack of a better word. Like I said, I've been in there for what, three years, three and a half years or whatever. And the conversations in that group alone add tremendous value. Great. Is there anything that you would like to add? Is there any maybe elevator pitch for replace your mortgage that you would would give to somebody? Do you, I'm sure you share this story with people from time to time. It's a huge win for you and your family. And I'm really glad that you did pull the trigger on it when you did. But there are a lot of people out there that they, they do see this as too good to be true. Um, yeah, it's skeptic. And it's because people in my, and, and again, let's go back to Michael's tagline, right? It's math, mm-hmm. not magic. People, it doesn't make sense, right? How can your five or 7% HELOC be cheaper than my 2% locked in rate from when interest rates were low? It's not necessarily that it's cheaper. I think that's where people get confused. It's all about leveraging the system, which again, all those tools that Michael gives you in the tool belt. And there's a lot of them, compound effect. And if you do it right, then it works. But it's it's something that I think most people, it is so against the grain. That it's hard for people to understand. So the elevator pitch would be very simple. Trust the process, right? You have to be able to follow the process, even when you don't understand it, because you don't have to understand it for it to work, but you do have to follow the process. And, and you were able to, and I'll, I'll let you reframe this, but you were able to save 27 years on your mortgage. And do you have any idea how much interest you avoided paying, not even taking into consideration the acquisitions? No, because I didn't really think about it. If you think it took us three years, we were a couple of years into our mortgage, probably 25 years worth of venture, which amortized would have been probably anywhere from 80 to 100,000. Wow. Awesome. Great. That's it. I don't really have anything else, Travis. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. Are you taking advantage of the referral fees that we pay out to people at all? You're entrepreneurial minded. I do refer people. I don't know if any of them have signed up or not. We don't talk about it a whole lot. And like I said, some people, we just real briefly, you know, because people ask, oh, what's your interest on? Most people understand HELOC from the second position. When you start explaining it, they're just, even with a testimonial like ours, like when we tell people, oh yeah, go here. They're just like, but again, that's, it, it takes the right person, the right personality. Yeah, it does. It doesn't work for everybody, but if you check the boxes, it can do what it's done for you. And so I would disagree with that statement. I would say it can okay. work for everybody, but it's dependent on you. Okay, that's fair. There are, there are some circumstances that need to be true with people level. Circumstances are true and they check those boxes, then absolutely. It's a better way to debt service 100%. Running the numbers, like comparative to your mortgage payment, just because I've been curious myself. Sure. If you can make your mortgage payment, typically converting to this will save you. But again, people lack the discipline. That's the biggest. And from what I see, just as a business owner myself, people typically like the discipline because you remove that monthly payment requirement. And so people like the discipline, like, oh, I don't need to make my full house payment this month. Oh, just, uh, I'm just saying, not saying they don't have to, but just in my experience, knowing people, right? That's mm-hmm. typically what gets them in trouble is they don't have the discipline to do it themselves. Is it a willpower thing? No, we live in a we live in a world of instant gratification. Sure. Okay. So okay. we've 
screwed the pooch ourselves on that one. That's great feedback. That's true. And congratulations, Travis, on on being one of our success stories. And thank you for all of it. Like I went through and I looked at all of your activity in the group after I saw the and sent that message to you. And thank you for being as active and as helpful as you've been uh, in that community. It's It really is uh, invaluable to the other members and probably to yourself. You're probably learning a lot as you go doing that as well. Yeah, I don't think I, I contribute a ton, but... When people ask questions, I yep. try to provide some feedback. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. We really do. That's it. I didn't want to even take this much time, but I really appreciate you taking the time and keep going. What's next, Travis? How, how are you going to continue to leverage this and grow even within the Replace Your University family? Do you have any aspirations to look at any of the other products at this point? We have some. We actually just bought another house. Okay. Which we use the HELOC to fully fund. Okay. So we, I've looked at Replace Your Banker with okay. Jeremy. Don't time for me is for me, that's probably the only other one that would, that okay. I think fits in, in the RYU category. I don't want to get super big into real estate. Sure. So Nate's stuff is not interesting to me at all. I dabble and dabbling is enough for me. Yeah, sure. Okay. My business being able to survive through COVID, my business is really my main thing. So just Having that equity there when I need it has been super helpful. That's awesome. probably afforded us. When we talk about like our growth or our personal growth, it's probably because we had the fluid cash that we could just use as needed. Okay. Typically, awesome. your mindset would be more restrained. Oh, I can't take this out of savings. Or, oh, that's our emergency fund. We can't spend that. Like people build up these invisible walls because of Dave Ramsey and whoever the hell tells you how you should be spending or saving money. Right. And this process basically eliminates all of those. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you have access to all your money all the time yep. and you're using it to leverage or deleverage interest against you. So it's a mindset shift. Sure. That's tough for people. It's hard yeah. to fit all that into an hour presentation on Zoom sometimes. Unplugging the wires is one of the hardest parts of the sales job here. It is. Um, it, it's definitely it's the, you, you make a really good reference, right? It's, and, and I would almost use this as a marketing effort, right? Like it's a matrix thing. Do you want the mm -hmm. red pill or the blue pill? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it really if is. You're not, if you're not ready to hear the message, then my hour is wasted on you. People, people will get defensive almost because they build a fortress around what they think they know. We all mm -hmm. do. It's human nature for us to do that. And when you come in and you say, there's something else, it takes a little trust. It takes a little openness on their end. And if they're not open to it, the call's over. Uh, a lot of people will leave a sales call. And I, I've been doing sales here for the last six months. A lot of people will leave the sales call thinking they can go do it themselves. So you sharing that what was most valuable to you was the stuff that you weren't even looking for. You didn't even know was there. It's all the ancillary things that people don't think about. Right. And to go into that even more, it's really, it's a pride issue, right? We as people don't want to think that we made a mistake or that sure. we did something wrong. And when someone tries to tell us, hey, there's a better way, we have to admit that we were doing it wrong to begin with. Yep. And it's the, what is it? The sunken cost fallacy? Mm -hmm. Like people will continue mm -hmm. to spend money in erroneously because they don't want to admit that they were, in, that they were right. wrong. They'll work hard to, I almost want to say bury the mistake and just blindly move forward and try to justify rather than take that step back and say, oh, wow, this is great. And, and we hear that all the time. This seems great. I, I think a good messaging or positioning is, hey, we're not saying that you're doing it wrong because obviously this works. We just want to show you a better way. Yep. I think sometimes the positioning or messaging or people take it that way because it's like they get very defensive. Totally. I'm not really good at sales. The first objection you have to defeat is acknowledging their feelings in it. This might make you feel uncomfortable because you might feel like, oh, dang, yeah. I've screwed this up for how many years of my life? Great. All right, Travis, thank you very much again for taking the time. It was great to hear the story. Appreciate the, the, the kind words about the program and wish you continued success. Keep leveraging that, that HELOC and, and using that and avoid that evil banking system as much as you possibly can. So oh, I, I did forget to mention too, have a, a whole life insurance policy that okay. talk about pursuing wealth and leveraging the mastermind, right? The group that's, that has been helpful as well. Okay, great. Awesome. You've learned some stuff about how to stitch that into the to the method and you said double dipping you you're triple dipping then at that point yeah, yeah right on so okay thank you sir really appreciate yeah. it you're welcome thanks for taking the time yeah no it's great awesome see you later yeah